state levels. We have five layers, five maqasid, which is the, the protection of human being, protection of his religion, protection of wealth, family, and all of those aspects. So it goes in two aspects. So first aspect of whatever good, Allah is encouraging you to do it. And another way, Allah is telling you the things that will detrimental. For example, Allah said, I will protect the family. So he said, okay, you worship Allah, fear Allah and give rights to your partner. At the same way, Allah prohibited fornication and adultery. Now, if Allah said, okay, I'm only allowing marriage and do all the good things and you don't have to refrain from bad things, still marriage will break because adultery and fornication allowed. Yeah, yeah. The way, the reason why adultery and fornication is prohibited so that it can protect you, the marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and this is the divine yeah. uh, wisdom and the guidance of Allah that it's a totality of the solution yeah, for yeah, mankind. Yeah, yeah. Because mankind are bound to fall mistake. But the robust guideline is therefore to protect people. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You see, yeah. so Islam comes on a wider angle to cover all the narrative. Like when Allah explained things, he doesn't leave any blind spot. Yeah, yeah. He clarified all the blind spot and where we can fall into mistake. Yeah. And Allah addressed those and telling you not to fall mistake on those categories. Mm -hmm. So for example, Allah said that if you do salah, yeah. then it can prevent you from bad stuff. Okay, yeah. Now, if you have a daily routine of daily praying for salah, yeah, yeah. the time of doing crime, you are actually in the salah. And the moment you remember Allah, you cannot say, you cannot use your mind to go and yeah, do yeah, crime, yeah, yeah. you see? Yeah. So this is how Allah training your mind so that you can... Consciously thinking all the time. Exactly. About your actions. Yeah, and, and exactly. And that's why Allah said, Allah uh, bizikrillahi tatma'innal qulub. The true remembrance of God, you will ha uh, find peace and rest in your heart. Okay, yeah. It's not about money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about girlfriend yeah. or it's not about uh, any worldly desire yeah, yeah. nothing will suffice you yeah. only thing will suffice you is the true connection with your own maker because yeah. look the, the the life we are leading is very temporal very temporal life yeah, here yeah, yeah. right and, if, and there will be a time we all will have to go and then what we'll be asked question about this life yeah. what did we do did we recognize my own maker did, did I recognize the prophets and the messenger? If, why, I was reading about this, so, uh, I think I think I got the answer when I was reading it, but if, why does Allah need us to worship him? Yeah. Does it, is it a case if he doesn't need, need us and we need him? So basically, Allah clearly tells us. So it's the, more guidance rather than he's saying. So, so rather than looking at from Allah's angle, we need to look at from our angle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. The issue is if you don't worship God or worship God, it will not belittle him or not increase him or not decrease yeah, him yeah, any yeah, status. Yeah, yeah. You will worship God because of your own gratitude. Imagine okay. if you receive something. If you don't show your gratefulness, then you automatically fall on the shoes of ungratefulness. Yeah, yeah. Like imagine if you receive all the uh, help from uh, yeah, from your yeah, family yeah. and friends and if you never say thank you to them yeah exactly yeah. right so worship is to s survive ourselves yeah. from the question yeah. from the allah because allah will not punish no, Be allah will punish you because of your ingratitude yeah. okay yeah that makes you sense, see yeah. sir yeah. so therefore allah yeah. saying you know Carry on. yeah therefore allah allah saying that the true soul is the one who look for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And Allah said uh, in the Quran, chapter 39, Allah said, mm -hmm. O mankind, O, o children, right? Allah is addressing everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. O the slave of everyone, Allah is addressing. Do not lost your hope yeah. from forgiveness and mercy of Allah. Okay, yeah. Right? So you, we are bound to fall make mistake. But the moment we realize our mistake, if we stand firm that not to do it, make an intention and try to act upon it, Allah will forgive you your sin based on the process. And Allah knows you will fall short again. Yeah, yeah. But if you maintain the process, Allah is al ghafur al rahim yeah? He is uh, the, the, the forgiver, right? He is at tawab he is al ghafur he has all these attributes of forgiveness and showing mercy, right? 
So therefore, you know, we don't have to lose our hope. We have to be optimistic. But at the same time, optimism should not be just sufficient enough without having worshipping, mm -hmm. without uh, gratitude in God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why, you know, Islam constantly telling you, oh, you who believe, pray and do good works. Okay, yeah. It does, if you look at Quran, you will read the translation. Yeah. Allah say, when you, oh, who you who believe, worship and do good works. Mm -hmm. What is good works? day-to-day -day life, the yeah. totality of code of guidance given in the Quran and the yeah. Sunnah. Okay, yeah. So the moment you worship Allah, you will already saying what you have to act on it. Like for example, in Salah you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, then Allah is responding to you to, Allah is saying that my, law, uh, my servant has praised me, ar rahman ar rahim Malik Yomidin. When you utter these things, you are saying, my Lord is my maker, my Lord is the Lord of all the universe. My Lord is the, uh, the, the, the Lord of the universe yeah, who yeah, yeah. shows bounty and mercy. Yeah. And then he alone is the king of day of judgment. He yeah. was alone the, the owner of the day of judgment. Okay. And then I ask Allah's help, guide me to the straight path and uh, save us from those who anger your wrath, mm -hmm. you know, who, who angered you yeah, yeah, yeah. by committing like Pharaoh, yeah. uh, Nimrod and other tyrant king yeah. and those who who are criminals, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we say, I mean, means Allah accepted. So every day, 17 times, we say to Allah, Allah guide me to the straight path. Why? You have deception, yeah, yeah. worldly. You will have, you know, Allah said in chapter 3, uh, uh, in Surah Al Imran, Allah said, Zuyina linnasi hubbu shahawati minan nisa wal banin wal qanatir. The alluring thing for man is the woman, the wealth. And worldly deception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I forgot the exact translation. So basically, it's talking about what things will allure you, human yeah. beings, right? Okay, yeah. So the one who is submissive is the one who follows Allah and His Messenger. Means you follow the guidance given by Allah. Yeah, yeah. So Islam comes in a totality of the package with the belief, with worship and practice, but all of those things must be aligned with how God tell us yeah, yeah, yeah. and how Prophet tell us. That's why if you ask a Muslim that, okay, give me some advice on something mm -hmm. and you will have to ask him, where is the evidence? Okay, yeah. Because in Islam, we are being told that if any stranger comes to you with information, you must ask for evidence. And our evidence must be backed by the book of Allah okay, yeah. and, and the teaching of Prophet Muhammad yeah, yeah, yeah. And Allah said that do not lie against me. How can, how can be, uh, things be like if there is thing that Allah didn't say and okay. if you make it up, it's lie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, Islam, we have to be very careful yeah. what we say. Yeah? It must be aligned with what God said yeah, and yeah. His Messenger said. Okay, yeah. so Allah didn't give this in unseen. You know that a matter of unseen information. Mm -hmm. These cannot be known through the realm of our intellectual faculties. Mm -hmm. this, must, this is unseen knowledge and unseen knowledge must be hold by the one who knows unseen. Yeah, yeah. Now, by default, I do not know unseen. Neither no creation knows unseen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only the creator knows the unseen. Yeah. So unseen things was revealed uh, to us, whatever is required for us to know. Okay, yeah. So Allah talks about the angel. Allah talks about afterlife. And Allah talks about our day of judgment, what will happen, how Allah will question it. Allah will ask you, about your faith, Allah will ask you about how did you earn your money? Yeah, yeah. Allah will ask you how did you spend your money? How did you react with the people? Every atom amount of things will be considered on yeah, that. Yeah. Even uh, the minute fraction, yeah? Even as little as the master seed will be also. Okay, yeah. So nothing will be hidden from Allah's judgment. Yeah, yeah. Allah will bring everything and Allah will judge it. So we have to be careful before the judgment. Mm -hmm. We don't want to end up and regretting, oh, ya laytani kuntu duraba, should I be, become dust? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people will say, Allah, what? I should have been dust yeah. before seeing this scenario. Yeah, yeah. And even there's one amazing hadith when I looked into prophet teaching, you know, when the people will be thrown to the hellfire, yeah. the gatekeeper of the hellfire would say, did no messenger came to you? Do you see? So, 
This is an evidence that Allah, even before throwing it to hellfire, the angel will ask. And, and the people, those who deny, Allah will make them accountable on the day of judgment. Can you tell me the difference between, this is just going off what's obviously topical in the news at the minute, the difference between a Sunni and Sunni and Shia. 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 Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Shia. So in Islam, in Islam we, we believe Allah, we follow Allah and His Messenger. Okay, yeah. And after Messenger, there are three generations. Mm -hmm. We follow their teaching. Okay. Sorry. Overground is this way. So within the Shiaism, there are some certain aspect of shirk included, which is association. So there are certain aspect of major groups in the Shiaism that they believe the imama. So imama is someone, they nominated some person, they believe that they have divinely inspired. To the, as a predecessor of the prophets and afterwards and they also believe Imam Ali radiallahu anhu is the superior over other companion but we found from the mainstream tradition from the Quran and the Sunnah Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in Islam strictly restricted that you cannot uh, uh, associate partner with God no intermediary in this world yeah no intermediary will be able to help you so we don't worship through if a Muslim say i am going to worship through this imam because he is more pious than me so that his prayer can reach yeah, yeah, yeah. we call it shirk okay, yeah. association of partner yeah, because yeah. allah created you and he asked you to directly ask him mm -hmm. every soul that's why in islamic uh, uh, creed allah said La taziru waziratan no soul will bear someone else's responsibility okay. so that's against ghost against the quranic teaching so this is the mainstream understanding of course I can go whole night but I'm just gonna give you the main so the main theme is it goes and break the oneness of God and Islam strictly monotheist why because it is unfair to take God's right and worshiping something else so imagine if you say this man will help me to reach God that means what is the difference between a Hindu and you do you know why Hindu does? If you ask them who created the universe, he will say the God up there. Then why do you worship this stone? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what he say? He will say this stone will help me to reach God. And we are saying God is all seeing. He's Al Basir. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is a Samir. He can listen. So he doesn't need an intermediary. Yeah. The moment you say this stone will help you, you actually taking the God's attribute yeah, out. Yeah. So this is in line with. So if we apply this test of the category, we can take all the false. That's why our shahada start with la ilaha first means you need to reject first the false god. Why? So that you can truly worship Allah. You see, rejection is important so that you can truly appreciate who your maker and then your worship can direct, go to the direct god. Like imagine if I take, uh, uh, lend money from uh, Raihan and I start thinking you, it's unfair, isn't it? I should give my brother a hand. So, this is uh, the answer to your question. Cool. So, when are you becoming Muslim? Tell me. I've got to keep studying. I say I want to keep studying. But you know, you know. I appreciate the conversations like yeah, this yeah. to help me to get further. Yeah, yeah. That's what I want is. And listen to the Quran, you know.